Student loan payment pause is going to end. It's going to end December 30. I'm extending to December 31st, 2022, and it's going to end at that time. It's time for the payments to resume. Second, my campaign for president, I made a commitment. I made a commitment that would provide student debt relief. And I'm honoring that commitment today. Using the authority Congress granted the Department of Education, we will forgive $10,000 in outstanding federal student loans. In addition, students who come from low-income families, which allowed them to qualify to receive a Pell Grant, will have their debt reduced $20,000. Both of these targeted actions are for families who need it the most. Working and middle-class people hit especially hard during the pandemic, making under $125,000 a year. If you make more than that, you don't qualify. I will never apologize for helping Americans working, working Americans in middle class, especially not to the same folks who voted for a $2 trillion tax cut that mainly benefited the wealthiest Americans and the biggest corporations that slowed the economy, didn't do a hell of a lot for economic growth, and wasn't paid for and racked up this enormous deficit. Just as we've never apologized when the federal government forgave almost every single cent of over $700 billion in loans to hundreds of thousands of small businesses across, the, across America during the pandemic. No one complained that those loans caused inflation. A lot of these folks in small businesses are working in middle-class families. They needed help. It was the right thing to do. So the outrage over helping working people with student, with student loans, I think is just sing, simply wrong, dead wrong. And that's another campaign promise fulfilled. The Biden administration will be forgiving $10,000 of student loan debt and $20,000 for Pell Grant recipients, a move that will impact 27 million borrowers. The forgiveness will only apply to individuals earning less than $125,000 a year, and there will be one final pause in student loan debt repayments until December 31st, 2022. And this all came as promised by Biden since both his campaign and the early days of his presidency. On the economy, uh, the vice president-elect talked about having an economy uh, that works for working people. One thing I didn't hear you talk specifically about is canceling student loan debt. Does student loan forgiveness figure in your plan? Would you take executive action to achieve it? It does figure in my plan. I've laid out in detail. For example, the, uh, uh, the legislation passed by the Democratic House calls for immediate $10,000 forgiveness of student loans. It's holding people up. They're in real trouble. They're having to make choices between paying their student loan and paying their rent, those kinds of decisions. It should be done immediately. In addition to that, if you know, I think that everything from community college straight through to doubling Pell Grants to making sure that we have access, free education for anyone making under $125,000 for four years of college. And there is a program that exists now under the law that forgives student loans for being able to engage in, engaging in public service. I'm, I'm going to institute that fundamental change in that so it's able to be available to everyone that, in fact, is engaged. It's not being very well managed right now. So I'm going to do all of those things. Like, and students, I mean, this is a gen look, we just went through the, the people got hurt most in the economic recovery last time were, were the millennial generation. They inherited this incredible debt that they, mm -hmm. in fact, had as a consequence of student loans. We should be giving for giving $10,000 minimum in student loan debt for all these folks now who are up to their ears in trouble right now. We can do this. We can afford to do mm -hmm. it. And secondly, I think I propose that with a minimum of $10,000 forgiveness per person for student loan debt because we're putting you behind an eight ball in a way that is just hard to overcome. And for those out there who say, well, I paid off my loans, but now everyone else is getting $10,000 forgiven. Here's the thing. We all benefit from living in a society where millions of people aren't saddled with crippling debt. Think about what it'll mean for everyone if millions of people who'd been giving all of their money to loan sharks can instead use that money at restaurants, at clothing stores, at small businesses, on vacations, in their communities. That benefits everyone, including you. Republicans want you to think that other people living with dignity somehow means that your quality of life gets worse. That is dead wrong. Living with dignity is not a zero-sum game. It is the bare minimum of what we should 
should strive for in the richest, most prosperous country in history. Think too about the potential that's lost when people are saddled with debt. It's not just about where people are able to spend their money now, today, it's about the opportunities that are lost. If you're dealing with crushing debt, you're less likely to start a small business, less likely to own a home or have kids. If we want people in this country to reach their true potential, which again, benefits everyone, then the idea that all of their money should be siphoned off to loan sharks is utter nonsense. Republicans are also going to claim that this is a giveaway to the rich. Again, that is a lie. The $10,000 in student loan forgiveness is only for those making under $125,000. So for those Republicans out there claiming that this is somehow a massive giveaway to the top 1% of students, just remember that those students are quite literally not eligible for this student loan debt elimination. But on that point, what I find especially ironic is that if Republicans are suddenly so concerned about giveaways to the rich, you might consider asking them why they all voted for Trump's 2017 tax cut, which overwhelmingly benefited millionaires and billionaires. Weird how none of them were worried about giveaways to the rich back then. And more recently, if Republicans were worried about helping out non-rich Americans, why did they vote against capping insulin at $35 a month for non-Medicare recipients? Why did they vote against the Inflation Reduction Act, which would cap seniors out of pocket prescription drug costs at $2,000 a year? Or that would actually make billion dollar corporations pay a minimum of 15% in taxes? Or that would fund the IRS so that tax cheat wouldn't get away without paying their taxes. It's always so interesting to hear Republicans grandstand about helping the little guy when quite literally every single policy position they hold is to screw over the little guy while heaping favor onto millionaires and billionaires. And by the way, to further expose just how prevalent of a problem student loan debt is, recognize that more than 45 million Americans collectively owe more than $1.7 trillion in student debt. That's almost 9% of the GDP, all tied up in useless interest payments as opposed to going into the actual economy. And it's not just the amount, it's also a racial justice issue. While only 11% of white men and 17% of white women have student loan debt, 15% of black men and 31% of black women have student loan debt. And black borrowers owe an average of $25,000 more than their white counterparts. This announcement on forgiveness will play a massive massive role in restoring some semblance of racial justice that has disproportionately impacted communities of color in this country spanning generations. Here's the thing, when more people prosper in this country, we all prosper. We should want money to stay in our communities, in our small businesses, among our neighbors and friends and families. That's how we rebuild the middle class that's been decimated by 40 years of Republican-led trickle-down economics and an explosion of wealth inequality. It didn't work then and it continues not to work now. So Republicans will try to fearmonger, they'll work relentlessly to pit you against other Americans, but people seeking a little debt relief aren't the enemy. The enemy is predatory lenders sucking millions upon millions upon millions of dollars out of the middle and lower class. Those are the people we should be focusing our disgust at, and those are the exact people who Republicans are running cover for. So good on the Biden administration for keeping its promise, and congratulations to the millions and millions of borrowers in this country who will finally see a little relief. And I hope everyone recognizes what it's like to have a party in charge finally looking out for regular Americans as opposed to the money-hungry special interests who are constantly looking to screw them over. Before you go, couple things. First, if you want to support my work, the best way is to subscribe to this channel. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. And second, if you want to see and hear more from me, check out my website, BrianTylerCohen.com. That way you can get links to my podcast, merchandise, ways to donate to voting rights organizations, and so much more. The thumbnail is also right here on the screen, so go check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching.